Welcome to today's Canyon View Bite Size PD uh, covering Canva, not Canvas, but Canva for students and teachers. Canva is an easy to use drag and drop graphic design tool that is simple and safe for teachers and students to use in the classroom. So as we move through today's Bite Size PD, I would like you to keep in mind that icebreaker question that you answered while waiting for today's session to start. And that is, what is one teacher presentation or one student project that could really use a makeover? Because Canva might be your answer. So just a reminder that our professional development norms are to be committed, responsible, respectful, and safe. Please feel free to take care of your needs and to pipe on up and ask any clarifying questions, or you can also put your questions in the chat. When we are online, as we are today, please make sure you have muted your microphone. It is great if you would like to turn on your camera and even blur your background, but if you are not comfortable, please feel free to turn your camera off. Again, if you have a question or comment, please type it in the chat, or you can just pipe on up when the time is right. This is a reminder that all of our Canyon Zoo Bite Size PD series supports our CSD MTSS framework. Today's learning intentions and learning intention is I am learning how Canva can be used to refresh content presentation in my classroom and provide a new way for students to demonstrate understanding. Today's success criteria is I'll know I've learned it when I've identified at least one way I can implement Canva in my classroom. So that's your goal for the next half hour is as you are being introduced to Canva, think of one way it can be used to refresh either a teacher presentation or a student project. During the next 30 minutes, we're going to answer what is Canva. We're going to look at some of the basics of Canva. We're going to get ideas for refreshing teacher content presentation, ideas for refreshing assessment or student projects, and we're going to talk about how you as an educator can get a free Canva account and access all of the premium features of Canva. So again, Canva is a drag and drop graphic design platform with free templates. It has templates uh, for presentations, infographics, newsletters, posters, videos, visual canvas elements, uh, such as your class banner at the top, buttons you might include on a content page, and there are so many more templates available. If you have something that you would like to design and to make sure it, make, it looks professional, go to Canva, see what templates are available. You can always create anything from scratch, from a blank canvas within Canva, to fit any dimensions that you would like. So let's take a quick tour so that we can really better understand what Canva is and what Canva has to offer you as a teacher and your students. Again, Canva is approved for use by teachers and students. So this can be used by everybody in the classroom. Here we have the Canva dashboard, which we access by going to canva.com. At the end of this presentation, I'll show you how to sign up as an educator. You will use your at canyonsdistrict.org email address. So here we can see I have some recent designs that I've been working on. There are some suggested templates, and we can also access templates up here in the top left corner. So you can see that there are social media templates, personal templates, such as invitations, resumes, postcards. There are templates related to business, marketing, and, and of course, education. So there are templates for classroom decor kits, lesson plans, worksheets, certificates, class schedules. 
the list goes on and on. And of course, down here more specifically, we can see that there are education presentation templates, educational video templates, education infographic templates, et cetera. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like to create a Canva product. You can either click on a template to go ahead and customize that template, or you can choose a custom size to set custom dimensions for whatever you're making. We're going to go ahead and click on education infographic. Now notice the infographic that I chose was just a blank infographic, but I can still access. <coughs> I can still access a variety of templates over here on the left. If I click on a template, it will populate on that blank canvas. And if I click on the three dots, I can learn a little bit more about the style. So let's see what we have here. Here, if we zoom in, I can see an infographic that focuses on the name uh, that focuses on a famous person. So perhaps that could be a historical figure, a character in a novel, et cetera. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that template because I'd like to use it. Now I can choose to apply all three pages or just one. So again, this first one is more specific to focusing on a famous person. And then we can see here that this last page is a resource page. It has different elements that we can add to our infographic if we'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and apply all three pages. Okay. Now this is fully customizable. Normally I would zoom in using Canvas, but my zoom controls actually make it so I can't. So I'm just zooming in on my browser as a whole. But again, everything here is fully customizable. So I can change the name of the famous person or maybe that novel character. I can go ahead and fill in facts about them, et cetera. I can also choose to change the images if I don't like them. So in this case, I'm going to ungroup and I'm going to delete that person's face. I can search for different elements available within Canva over here on the left by clicking on elements. And let's say I am creating an infographic about Abraham Lincoln. I can just search Lincoln. And here we have a variety of free elements available for students and teachers to add to their infographic or other project. Those include photos, graphics, and more. Now, the great thing about an educator account or a student account is we have access to all of the premium Canva features. So if you just sign up for a free Canva account, not as a teacher, uh, you will be limited in what you can access. But if you have a Canva for Education account, you have access to everything. So again, we are creating an infographic about Abraham Lincoln. So we could choose to add an element by clicking on it. We can move that around and easily resize. As far as adding and manipulating elements, it works a lot like Google Slides or PowerPoint, which most of us are familiar with. In this case, the image I've added is all black and I can go up here and change the color. Notice it says document colors, so I can pick a different color that matches the rest of my template. So again, everything on here is fully customizable. I can replace the elements, I can change the text, and I can move things around as appropriate. I also added the three pages of the template. And when I download those, when I choose to download my product, I can choose to just download the first page, download all three, et cetera. As I'm editing, I also have the option to upload my own images or elements. 
so we can simply drag and drop our own photographs, our own flat icons, et cetera. So we can really personalize our product. If we click on text, we can simply add text and change the size, font, and color later, or we can choose from a variety of preset font combinations. So it's gonna look a little messy when I click on it, but if I click on a font combination that I like, it will be added to my project and I can always customize what it says. We have the option of styles here, and that allows us to choose a font and color combination if we want to have a consistent theme throughout our project. That really helps with making more professional looking presentations and things like that. We can add audio, video, we can change the background color, add charts, QR codes. Uh, the options are really limitless. So as far as how we add things and customize, it works a lot like a Google Slides presentation. The biggest difference is Canva has all of these elements ready to go. Students and teachers don't need to search for them, right? We can just go to elements and find pictures and icons, et cetera. We don't need to search the internet for them. So it's really great in that way. It's also really easy to resize things and choose the correct dimensions. For example, in Google Slides, if you wanted to make a, a poster, let's say, you could manually change the dimensions. Or in Canva, we can simply search for poster. And it has a bunch of preset dimensions from which we can choose. So we can simply choose poster. And just like that, we can choose to create a blank poster or we see a variety of templates that we can then fully customize. When we're ready, I'm just gonna slide this over here so I can see it. When we're ready as a teacher, you can choose to download your product. Some of the options include a high quality PNG image, a JPEG image. We can download our product as a PDF an MP4 video, which works well with presentations that have animation or audio. It also works well, of course, for video. We can create a GIF, et cetera. So there's lots of different ways to download what you need so that you can then use it in Canvas, for example. For your images, you can always choose to have a transparent background. Uh, so if you use an icon, let's say, you don't have to have a white or colored background behind it. You can make that background transparent. So this is a great way to create buttons for your Canvas course. And again, you can choose which pages of your product you're going to download. Now, the great thing about using this with students is you can also have students submit directly to you in Canvas if you set them up with your Canvas class. However, I recommend just teaching students to create in Canva and share on Canvas. So when we are thinking about our own content presentation as a teacher, Canva can be a great place to go to create more aesthetically pleasing or professional looking presentations uh, using templates so that we can create things that otherwise we might not have been, we might not have the skill set to create on our own. We can very easily take something pre-made and customize it on Canva. We can create classroom posters. Again, there's the option to create videos, which we can see down below. And we can also create Canvas elements. I highly recommend using Canva to create a banner for your Canvas course. Uh, you can create buttons for your Canvas course, and you can also create your course card. A little tip, if you do use Canva to create your Canvas images, when you are downloading your banner or a image you're gonna use in your Canvas course, I recommend using, excuse me, I recommend downloading your project as an SVG. Um, this means it is a scalable vector graphic 
And as you resize that image in Canvas, or as Canvas automatically resizes your images to fit different screen sizes, it will stay nice and sharp. So if you have an issue with a, a blurry classroom banner in Canvas, for example, I recommend creating a Canvas banner in Canva, downloading it as an SVG, and it'll stay nice and sharp. Unfortunately, you cannot upload an SVG for a Canvas course card, but we can get those images in Canvas nice and sharp. In terms of student products, there are endless possibilities. And I encourage you to think of different assessments within your class for which students don't necessarily need to create a, a written product. Again, if we're not assessing student writing, but we're assessing content knowledge and mastery of content, we don't need a written product. So a lot of times in classes, we have students write a paragraph to show what they learned, write an essay to show what they learned, um, et cetera. There's really no need unless we're actually assessing their writing. So consider replacing one of those written products with a Canva element. Some great ideas include a, a lab report infographic or other infographic, excuse me, or infographic to demonstrate report information. We, students could make a trifold brochure with information collected from their research. They could create a graph to represent data from class. They can house a student portfolio in Canva. They can create diagrams, um, create a poster to demonstrate their mastery and their understanding. We can have students create a resume for a historical figure or fictional character. And in that way, uh, we are assessing their understanding maybe of a historical event, of characterization in a novel, but we're also introducing them to the idea of a resume, which they will use when they go for a job after, after their education. Students could use Canva to create a timeline. They can create a multimedia report. <coughs> Excuse me, because again, in Canva, there's the option to create videos. We can also have them do a presentation where their voice is recorded. So that's another way to do a multimedia report. Students who are learning about argument can create a PSA or public service announcement poster or infographic or short film. Students can represent their, their content knowledge uh, by creating an informational magazine article, a comic strip, a social media campaign project. Uh, there's a huge variety of things students can do. One of the great things too is with so many templates available, as soon as we teach students how to use Canva, we can always have them choose. Uh, we can set our expectations for the assignment using a rubric that is standards aligned and tell students you can create a poster or an infographic or a comic strip to demonstrate such and such. Let's see, we have a question in the chat here. Is there an option for collaboration with their peers? Great question. Let me go ahead and return to Canva. Oops. <coughs> Excuse me. So there is the option for collaboration. And it is my understanding that you would have one student create, um, let's say, start from a template or create a blank project. And before they get started, they can go to share. And then they can add names or emails. Um, and so students would be using their, I believe they'd be using their CST Docs accounts, and they could collaborate that way. Um, I actually just realized, uh, hopefully Canva does not send invitation emails to their CST Docs accounts, but I believe we do have it whitelisted, which means that if that's true, students actually can receive those Canva invitation emails to their CSD Docs account. So as a teacher, when you invite them to your class or when students create a new account, there shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but yes, they can collaborate. However, keep in mind that this 
that a Canva collaboration situation is not like Google Drive. So in Google Drive, if you're collaborating on a, uh, a Google Slides presentation, you can see in real time the changes being made by collaborators. However, in this case, you might not necessarily see those changes in real time. So it can get a little hairy to have kids working on the same thing at the exact same time. This might be better for asynchronous collaboration. Um, and the great thing is students can always click on elements, leave comments for their peers. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for collaboration, but it's not going to be as seamless as Google Drive because again, it's not that real time, up. it doesn't have those real time updates. Great question. Of course. And again, if you have any questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat. And as soon as I see them, I'll try my best to answer them. So again, as an educator, you have access to a free Canva account that includes all of the premium features. And so in order to sign up for an account as a teacher, you're going to visit canva.com slash education. Here you will go ahead and sign up now. Okay, let's see. And you just go ahead and fill out the information. And let me check, I believe I used my Canyons District email. Oh no, I was able to use my CSD Docs account. That's right, because we can receive emails from Canva specifically to our CSD Docs account. And that's nice too, because then we and our students could use that Google single sign-on button. No need to uh, repeatedly type in our email address and password. So you can sign up with your CSD Docs account. It will take a little bit of time to get verified. <coughs> Excuse me but I've never had to wait more than 48 hours for a verification. And if we go back here, you can also invite class members. And so as a teacher, this is how you can invite students to your class. So you have a little bit more control over how students are interacting with Canva. It is for kids thir uh, 13 and older. However, Canva's privacy policy does say that students under 13 can use Canva if being directly supervised by an adult. So if you are having kids under 13 work on Canva in the classroom and you are watching them work, that is acceptable. When you're ready to invite students, you can, can click get invite link or you can get a code and you'll share that with students so that they can sign up for their own Canva accounts. There is more information on Canva at Canyons U. And of course, you can simply go to canyonsdistrict.org slash Canyons U. Oops, Canyons U. Canva is under C. And there it is. We can go ahead and click on that hyperlink there, Canva. And here you can find a variety of information. So we have how-to documentation on getting started with Canva, choosing a template, options for publishing your design, how you can collaborate with Canva, how you can use it with students, and other Canva uses. Canva is such a robust tool that this was really just kind of a fire hose of information in 30 minutes, uh, but you can go to Canyons U to get step-by-step -step information and learn more about how you can use it in your classroom. So again, as a reminder, that information is at www.canyonsdistrict.org slash Canyons U. You can also access a recording of this session as well as recordings of past sessions 
both this year and last school year by visiting our Bite Size PD page on Canyons U. Here is that direct URL, or you can find it under C on Canyons U for Canyons U Bite Size PD. If you're looking for relicensure credit for attending this Bite Size PD, please visit this URL here, fill out the information requested of you, and you can earn relicensure credit. In the last few minutes, do we have any questions that I can answer about Canva or how it can be used to refresh your teacher presentations or refresh student assessment and student products? Okay. If you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me directly. My name is Jenna Townsend, and I am a digital teaching and learning specialist with our instructional supports department. You can also reach out to your school based instructional coach who, if they are unable to answer any questions, can always send them my way. Perfect. I hope everybody has a great evening. And thank you so much for attending.